الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل عقدة من لساني يفهم قولي أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وشاورهم في الأمر فإذا عزمت فتوكل على الله صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين أما بعد Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As we go through the cause of life, if not on a daily, weekly, monthly, annual basis, we will always be faced up with matters and issues in which we need to take a decision and we need to have some direction. As we, as we grow up, youngsters and children, our elders will take a decision for us. Sami'na wa ata'na. This is the teaching. We have listened and we will obey. That's very important. And then as you go through life, then the different phases of life come upon us for which we need to make some big decisions. So whether it is marriage or it is business or sometimes it may be a trip, a journey, Matters in which there is a degree of uncertainty, unclear, sort of the lack of clarity. Should I do it or should I not do it? And in these issues, in these matters generally, there is confusion for the individual. And sometimes for an organization as well. Which way should we go? Sometimes it's Amr Jama'i and Amr Fardi. It's either an individual matter in your life. So it's your marriage, or it's your business, uh, uh, or a venture, or it's a journey, or whatever else not. And sometimes it is a collective issue, a matter uh, pertaining to a business, for example, and the board needs to take a decision, or the organization needs to take a decision. Amr Jama'i. And there is no clear-cut direction in which, the, which way to go. Now these issues we talk of are not related to the fara'id and wajibat and you know the sunan. In that there is no decision making, you have to do it. It's like you know what, let, let me make, let me have a decision, let me do mashura, let me consult regarding my fasting or regarding my salah. Or should I fast or should I not fast? Bismillah, fast. And even if it's the nawafil, it's like you know what, should I fast or should I not fast? Bismillah, do it. So it's these matters in which there is a lack of clarity. It's, amr, it's an open matter. It's, it's, a something, it's on a personal level. And you need to take a decision. What do we do? Previously, the Umam of the past and the, the, the people of Jahiliya, the pagans, they used to, they used to use the, the feathers and they used to use the pencils and they used to use the arrows and different, different uh, things they used to use. And they used to seek omen. Islam came and abolished these pagan practices and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala gave us a most beautiful uh, methodology to apply in these matters. Two aspects or two things. Number one is, and we'll talk of that first and then after that the second, the issue of istikhara. The matter of istikhara. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum say, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to teach us istikhara, the methodology and the dua of istikhara as he would teach us the Qur'an. Because of the need that we will have in our life and because of the importance of this practice, he وسلم, used to teach us istikhara like he would teach us Qur'an. Subhanallah. How much of istikhara do we have in our lives? The only time an individual, and only time an individual would perhaps consider and think about istikhara when it comes to ma marriage. But that's not the only occasion when you do istikhara. It's one of the big decisions in life, yes. But istikhara should be done on all matters, on all decisions in which we need some direction. Ma khaba man istikhar wa la nadima man istashar. That person who seeks is or makes istikhara, he will never be in loss. And the person who makes mashura and t takes counsel and consults, he will never, uh, he will never regret. Subhanallah. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, in Amr Jama'i, 
and on personal matters as well. He did mashura. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would so obviously mixing the two the two aspects mashura and istikhara. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when it came to the matter of Uhud, for example, the battles, the major battles, he sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sahibul wahi, the recipient of wahi. So he need he need not consult with his sahaba. He said, "This is what we're doing, and let's move on." Why? Because I'm getting information from the skies. But Allah says, "Washa wirhum fil amr." And consult with the Sahaba in, in matters. Subhanallah. Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam, on the occasion of Uhud, we'll come to that a little later. Let's come back to the matter of istikhara. So, that person who does istikhara will never be in loss, and the person who does mashura will never be in regret. <clears throat> what is istikhara? Istikhara is simple. Unfortunately, over the ages, we have attached certain meanings to the matter of istikhara and we made this year with, uh, beyond our reach because we have certain expectations of istikhara istikhara comes from the root comes from uh, the root word of istikhara in day is khair goodness and it comes from the 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 bab of istifal in which there is talab of something to seek out and search out a matter so when a person is making istikhara, when a person is doing istikhara, he is yatlubul khair, talabul khair. He is seeking and searching for goodness. From whom? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the methodology of istikhara was simple. He says when you face what a matter, for example, marriage, or you need to uh, undertake this uh, business deal, or venture, or whatever else. Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam, what he would do is, he would tell the Sahaba, perform two rakats of salah and recite the dua of istikhara. Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'ilmi. It's a lengthy dua, we should endeavor to learn it. Allah, I seek your good counsel, I seek goodness from you. Bi'ilmika, wa astakhiruka bi qudratika, wa as'aluka min fadlika al azim. I seek the, your power and I seek your good taqdeer. And ask of your good fadl, your good grace. فَإِنَّكَ تَقْدِرُ وَلَا أَقْدِرُ Allah, you have the power, I don't have it. وَتَعْلَمُ وَلَا أَعْلَمْ Ya Allah, you know, I don't know. وَأَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ Allah, you have the knowledge of all of the unseen. Allah, مَنْ كُنْتَ تَعْلَمُ أَنَّ هَذَا الْأَمْرُ Allah, if you know that this particular matter that I'm deciding upon, that I have to make a decision and choice for, is good for me, في uh, if it is good for me in my matters of deen, my matters of dunya, and my matters of akhirah, Allah bring it forward in my taqdeer, make it easy for me and put barakah in that matter. And then the opposite, Allah if you know that this matter is not good for me, and when we say هذا الأمر, this matter, then make niyyah of that matter that you're about to, you're making istikhara for, or you can even take the name of that issue that you're making istikhara for. Abu, -Ayyub, Abu Ayyub al Ansari radiallahu ta'ala an, he would uh, say, when it came to, the, came to the matter of marriage, he says, withhold the proposal, uktumil khitba, withhold the proposal slightly, and then do your istikhara and then go forward with the proposal. Now you've done the istikhara, how many times do we need to do it? The hadith talks of it once. We can add on, but there's no specific number. So sometimes it's one, sometimes it's three times. The scholars say, make mention of three times. Why? Because Rasulullah preferred three. The number of three, the odd number. So three, five, seven. But there's no specific number. The hadith talks of once. So Allah, I am about to endeavor in this matter, whether it's marriage, or whether it's business, or I'm going to buy this car. Allah put khair in this car for me. Allah put khair in this house for me. So after doing istikhara, what's the expectation now after that? What's the, what's the outcome? Do we wait for now some divine interven intervention? Do we wait for the, uh, the Archangel Jibreel to come down and give us some wahi? Or do we wait for a dream? What if you don't have dreams? Then you'll be stuck with istikhara forever in perplexity. And what if you're a person who's dreaming all the time? Now you don't know whether your dreaming is genuine or for real or is this your genie is troubling you in your dream or is something else. So that is now matters which we have entered and inserted into the matter of istikhara. 
Istikhara means talabul khair. Allah, I seek your goodness in this matter. So I have done my homework. I have done what is necessary upon me. And I have looked at the specifications. So I need to buy this vehicle. I use the example of a vehicle. I need to buy this vehicle. Maybe there's two. Okay, A and B. Or two brands. Okay, Allah, I got this car. There's, there's two that I need to choose from. Let me do my homework. In terms of, is it good for me financially? Will I be able to afford it? Is it uh, the fuel consumption? Do I want electric car or hybrid or plug-in plug -in hybrid? Or do I, do I, full, I want a full-on uh, combustion engine? And all of these things. What other features do I want? Okay, I've identified that car B is good for me. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Now I ask Allah for khair in that matter, in Kabi. Allah in face up, okay, I went to see the sister, this girl for marriage. You, I, from what I can understand, what references were given to me, my family likes her, what I have seen, I've liked, I, 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 I can appreciate the beauty of this girl and whatever else not, and she has compatibility and stuff. Allah, now I am taking the next step forward in this marriage, put khair in this marriage for me. How many times you have gone through the process of istikhara and few years down the line the marriage breaks up? How many times you went through the process of istikhara and you still have problems in the marriage? What do, what do people then say? But Shaykh Mawlana, I made the istikhara. Shaykh, I made the istikhara. What did you expect, brother? So istikhara. So whatever conditions come upon you after that will always be good for you as well. That is the meaning of istikhar. Allah, I seek your good counsel. Allah, I seek goodness from you in this matter. We are not waiting for a dream. And we do not ask the next person to do istikhara from us, for us. Because, say, you know, the people come to you, Sheikh, please can you make istikhara for me? And should I marry this girl or not? She tell her brother, brother, I, I going to get married or you going to get married? If you want me to get married, let me do istikhara for you. Maybe I'll go get married. Subhanallah. You are, the matter is pertaining to your life. You do istikhara yourself. It's you. The, the, the feeling, the sincerity, the connectivity, the ta'alluq. The scholars make mention that when a person makes the istikhara, he builds building a ta'alluq with Allah Ta'ala and seeking Allah's, uh, Allah's help. Obviously, this is if we have some time, but there's many matters that we might not have some time to do. Now, the discussion is quite lengthy and there's, there's a lot of other things to, uh, to, to, that we can talk about. The important thing is, it is not, it's not necessary that we will have to have some divine intervention or have a vision or a dream or we don't ask anybody else. We do it ourselves. There's no specific number or days that we do it for. There's no specific time of the day as well. You can do it and provided it's the, the correct hours of the day, it's not makruh times and prohibited times of the day for salah. Do two rakats of salah and do the dua of istikhara and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah khair in that matter. You will see, if you have gone through that process, how Allah will guide you. And kullun muyassarun lima khuliqala. Allah says, Nabi Sallallahu said, every matter, every person's road is mapped out for him and her as per the divine decree of Allah Ta'ala. Subhanallah. So the, when, you, when you're on this, uh, this road of, uh, the, of life, and then you just follow the path, you do your necessary homework, follow the path, and Allah will guide your hands. So that is istikhara. Sometimes you need to make a, 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 an istikhara on the spur of the moment. You're sitting and you're having a discussion. I need to make the decision now. What do I do? Allahumma khir li wa khtar li. Although the hadith of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, it's the, in the chain is a bit of dhaf, but the, the hadith stands. Oh Allah, this is as well. Oh Allah, you choose for me and select for me. Simple and easy. Allahumma khir li wa khtar li. Allah choose for me and select for me. Allah put goodness for me in this year. So I'm taking this decision. Allah, I'm going forward with this year. Allah, I'm saying Bismillah. Allah, I'm, I, I'm taking the next step forward. Put goodness for me in this matter. Subhanallah. Don't remain in a state of, you know, they say jijak kate. In a state of doubt. Or in a state of, you know, should I, should I not. If yes, or, or you know, have a direction, take a decision and move forward. Don't step back. Now comes the second matter and the importance of, of, of Mashura. Rasulullah as I was making mention in Uhud, he consulted with Sahaba, what should we do? So Nabi Sallallahu personal ra'i and opinion was to remain in Medina. We'll fight them and fend them off from within Medina. <coughs> Some of the other Sahaba, those who were anticipating and were waiting for, jihad, for the next opportunity of jihad, 
and uh, you know follow on from Badr and those who didn't have the opportunity of fighting uh, in the cause of Allah Ta'ala they were enthusiastic thinking Ya Rasulullah no we can't stay inside you know this will be an act of cowardice we need to move out of Medina and let's go and fight him outside Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made Mashura Sahaba radiallahu anhum and he saw the overwhelming uh, the, the, the zeal and enthusiasm of the Sahaba is that they want to go out so Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went he, they, they took a decision that they are going to go out of Medina Munawwara the next, the next day he saw Solomon wore his armor and then he exited. Before he came out, some of the senior Sahaba said to the others, Hey, listen, when you guys, you were putting pressure on the Prophet. Remember, he's Sahibul Wahi, yani he's receiving revelation himself. He doesn't need to do mashura. He doesn't need to take counsel. He doesn't need to consult. But Allah says, Washa wirhum fil amr and seek their mashura in all your matters. Make mashura at home. You're about to take a journey. What should we do? Sit down with the family. You know what we're thinking of this journey what should we do do you, th do you think it's a good idea what let's look at the let's look at the pros and the cons let's look at the you know the cost involved let's look at you know all of these things and once the mashura is made and everybody has given the opinion you read the, you read the dua of istikhara and allah will put barakah in the decision of yours after that whatever happens bismillah go along with it nabi sallam put on his armor and he came out and they said, Ya Rasulullah, you know what, we may have put some pressure on you. Whatever your decision you make, we are happy with your decision. If you want to stay in Medina, we are happy to stay in Medina. If you say we go out, we go out. Rasulullah said that when the Nabi has put on his armor of war, then it's, uh, it is not permissible for him to remove the armor. We have to move out now. Khalas. فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ And when you have taken your decision, then don't turn back. Look forward only. فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Place your trust in Allah and move forward. Why? Because then again you'll sit back with regrets. You know what? I made istikhara and maybe I should have go, I should have married the other girl, or maybe I should have married the other boy, or maybe I should have not moved, or maybe I should have done this and that. Many of us are, are experts. And you know when you're gonna come across and you, you there's so much to consider, there's so much to take in, there's so many so much of consulting to do. But you made your istikhara before you came across, before you're going to move as well, and you made your mashura and you did your homework, X, Y, Z. Now you say, فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Look ahead, move forward, and put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Challenges will come, difficulties will come. Allah will put you through the test to see, is your tawakkul genuine or not? Is your trust in Allah genuine or not? And you know what, happens, what happened in the battle of Uhud as well. After Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lost his teeth, he was injured in his cheek and his forehead, and all the sahaba sustained 70 casualties. And the battle of Uhud, they didn't look back. Oh, but we should have gone out. This was the act of nifaq. This was the munafiqeen did. They looked back. Uh, if they didn't go out, la, walaw, uh, if they, they should have stayed in, in Medina and they should have taken our opinion, X, Y, and Z. Rasulullah looked forward ahead. In his very personal matters also, when he was affected with the ifk and the, 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 um, the, the uh, accusation upon Sayyidina Aisha, anha, our beloved mother, radiallahu anha, wa ardaha, he took counsel from Sahaba radiallahu anhum. He said, give me your mashura. What should I do in this matter? It's a serious matter affecting my life and my family's life. He took mashura. So two important things in life. Oh yeah. And one last matter before we end off today, inshallah. And that is, from who should we seek our counsel? From who should we seek our mashura? Two people uh, we are taught in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in our teachings is, we seek counsel from Habib and Labib. A beloved because the beloved has your best interest in, your, in their hearts. Your beloved, your parent might not know the legalities and technicalities and the know-how. But they know what is good for you or not good for you. So seek counsel from your Habib. When you come to your scholar, your scholar might not know the answers exactly because it's a medical matter or it's a whatever engineering matter. So, but that connection, the spiritual connection, he is a Habib. He, is your, he has your best interest in his heart for you and he's going to always think good for you. And number two is Labib. Seek good counsel from an intelligent and knowledgeable person, a person who has the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will give you sound counsel and sound guidance. Don't go and seek counsel from a foolish person. When the partition was taking place, there was a land and they, their family wanted to purchase this land. The owner of the land came to seek mashura from him. Should I sell it or not? This was the perfect opportunity. He could have said, you know what, it's volatile. Get rid of it because you don't know what's going to happen. And let it go. He could have even decrease the, the fee and purchase it himself because what, that's what they wanted. But when the Mashura person came to seek counsel from him, Al-Mustashar Mu'tamanun, 
The mustashar from who you seek counsel, that person is entrusted and Allah has put a trust upon that person. Now divinely by Allah you are entrusted to give the good counsel and to keep it a secret as well. So he said to the brother, listen, it's, very, it's a touch and go situation and you might be in loss if you sell it, hold on to your property. Subhanallah. So seek counsel from a person who is a beloved and seek counsel from a person who is an inter- a scholarly person and as the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't forget the matter of istikhara. The, the, the procedure of istikhara, do two rakats of salah any times of the day, uh, we don't have to do it, there's no specific number attached to it, and read the dua, ask Allah for talab, yani talab al khair, ask Allah for goodness in your matter that you have already decided upon. And when you don't have time and need to do it quickly, Allahumma khirli wa khtarli, Allah choose and select for me in this matter that I'm undertaking. And then you, after that, you've done, you've, so you've done your counsel, you've say, you, you, sought, you sought the mashura and, and you've sought guidance, you did your istikhara, you did your homework, you looked at the specifications, everything within your humanly means, put the rest in trust in Allah Ta'ala, go ahead and go forward with it. This is dunya, challenges will come, but you will be contented in those challenges. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ